Now we're back in the country as East Africa Arts and we'll take a look at this particular program which aims to promote new arts, share skills of creatives and ignite partnerships between the United Kingdom and East Africa. Due to this, I'm joined in studio and I will let them introduce themselves, quite a number I must say, and perhaps <laughs> what you do in this particular, um, um, the East African arts yeah. um, sector. Yes. Hi, my name is Amido Shisha and I'm a jeweler in silver. Smith. Um, I'm based in Nairobi and I'm also part of this incredible program that actually the British Council in the East Africa Arts Program runs called the International Fashion Showcase. It runs worldwide. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, my name is Franco Gallo and I help in documenting the stories about artists in the East Africa Arts Program. Okay. Welcome. Hi, I'm Rocca and I also work with these amazing people at the East Africa Arts Programme. So working from Sudan to Rwanda to Uganda to Tanzania, like you said, promoting the arts and celebrating uh, the arts as well. Okay, perhaps I can start with you. The importance of arts, not just in East Africa, but globally. Um, perhaps <laughs> let's shed light on this as we get to break it down to the importance of East Africa Arts Programme. Wow, big question. Um, I guess also one I'll be completely biased about uh, because I'm in love with the arts, but I guess it, for me the arts reaches every single area from it supporting economic growth and job creation, but also to it being about a sense of pride or identity, confidence and excitement and celebration. It can also be a place where you can work through difficult issues, maybe in a way that is, you know, literally more creative than in other kind of social economic spaces as well. So it covers everything. It really yeah. does, yes. Yeah. And perhaps to the gentleman right next to you, um, the aim is to share skills of creatives and ignite partnerships between the United Kingdom, um, in the creative sectors in the United Kingdom and East Africa as well. Let's highlight on that. Is the progress um, quite commendable? How is the, um, the anticipation or the welcoming by the local governments towards this particular policy? I think it's, it's picking up pretty fine. And uh, one thing about the East Africa Arts Programme is based on research. So if you go to their website, you can see various researches, researches that they've done along the years. So the government is also picking it up really well, and artists are also getting their money's worth nowadays, so it's a mm. good thing, good progress. Speaking of artists getting their money's <laughs> worth, it only seems the deal that I actually come to you. Um, that has been a challenge, it must have, but um, with steps taken by various institutions, yes. especially the East African Arts Program, yes. how is this helping to um, alleviate the challenges you might face as an artist? I think that, um, I think that essentially, the opportunity to have um, perspective um, is is one of the main things that, for me, has been really, really beneficial with the, um, the IFS program that I'm participating in. Um, the, the other thing that has also, um, one of the things I'd like to mention is that when I started about four years ago, um, I was based out of Kuana Trust, which is essentially an artist collective collaborative workspace. Um, and it's not the only one in Nairobi, there are multiples of them, but I think that it was from working and interacting with other artists um, that we almost created a community of sorts um, and a sense of camaraderie. And yes, I mean, I think that when you choose to pursue a creative path, I think the money doesn't always follow immediately. Um, I think it takes a lot of perseverance and self-motivation. Um, so and that can be sometimes challenging. But, um, but I think that with programs um, that, for example, the Nest Collective and HIVA Fund run, as well as the East African Arts, um, you almost kind of have this natural momentum to be able to kind of continue and push and progress to the next level. Well, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the mindset in Kenya, perhaps, is shifting from the old age, old age adage of having conventional careers you know, to the artistic side where actually people are encouraged to um, sensitize or to showcase the artistic side. Do you think this is a good turn, especially for Kenyans and East Africans as well? I think it's a good thing because that's all jobs. So they are 
creative people now employed by companies to tell their stories. So it's a good thing, it's, it's creating jobs, it's connecting more young people, you know, it's developing young people as well. It, it is helping to develop young people, yeah. yes. And perhaps, um, speaking of the British Council and the steps they have taken to help the art industry in Kenya, not just through the East African arts um, 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 sector, but we're also looking at a holistic view. What perhaps is the main aim of having such um, such initiatives to help in this particular industry? Sure. I mean, our job will, at the British Council will always be about connecting young people in the UK and in this case in East Africa, in Kenya and East Africa. But I think like Ami um, was pointing towards, within Kenya there's an incredible artistic sector. Mm -hmm. You know, there's incredible organisations and also collectives of organisations like the Creative Economy Working Group who are coming together to really strengthen the whole sector, the art sector, from its kind of financial and its creativity and its voice as well. So I think as well as our agenda always being to kind of make new connections and celebrate new art that's made between cultures, we're particularly excited about what's already happening in Kenya. You know, the kind of collaborative community nature, the way people are coming together and supporting each other mm -hmm. um, to make art, but also to see how art will really um, be of value to themselves and to the audience as well, economically, like Frank said, and also socially, yeah. and also for fun and as well. Fun. Very yeah. important, I must say. Um, as we finish off, perhaps um, a message to the artists out there who have or who are just getting started and perhaps might not know um, of the challenges ahead, what advice would you give to them right now? I, um, I, think it's, it's, I think it's with anything, but I think that when you have the incredible opportunity to um, work through your talents and communicate things, um, it can, you can sometimes be plagued with self-doubt, mm -hmm. um, second-guess yourself, make mistakes, um, but I think the important thing is just to kind of persevere through it and, and also just have, have people around you that will be able to kind of help you and push you and motivate you to, to take the next step. Um, I think the arts in Kenya particularly, are, it's really growing and it's, it's a very dynamic scene. Um, and I think some might not necessarily know how diverse and dynamic the, the art scene is and the cultural scene is in Kenya and Nairobi particularly, but it's, it's incredible and I think that there's, we do need to kind of work together and, and create those communities and support each other, but just keep on going. If you have a talent, just push. <laughs> Oh, well, that's very important. Um, as we finish, very last question. The change of mindset, which is very important, is actually opening up doors for youth and older people alike. But who's eligible to actually join um, the East African arts? Um, and why should we actually open doors for them? You know? Mm -hmm. um, I think Roka should okay, answer okay, that. Okay, perhaps <laughs> let's... <laughs> But everyone, everyone is eligible. Everyone is eligible. Everyone is eligible. Okay. As long as you have an idea that you can put out there and you know you can work out, you can work with other people, everyone is eligible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And perhaps you can add on that. As sure. You yeah, we have, we have programs. I mean, we mainly focus on 18 to 35 year olds, both in the UK and East Africa, but we have programs uh, for all artists to apply. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's allowed, but the easiest way is always through Instagram on East Africa Arts. But I think in general, again, what Ami was saying, you know, the best thing is to keep going. And I, and I just have to promote the amazing work that both of these artists are doing. Frank is also a writer. So Ami Doshi Shah, you know, just following her journey on Instagram and, and, and Frank Agala as well is, I think that's the way is, you know, we build momentum by following and sharing and liking each other, both on the online sense, but also in the physical sense. So feel free. There's lots of grant opportunities at East Africa Arts as well. Well, I thank you so much for making time. We've come to the end of Bottom Line Africa. I feel well informed about the art sector in Kenya, not just in Kenya and East Africa, and also the partnership between the United Kingdom and East Africa. Thank you so much for making time. We've come to the end of Bottom Line Africa. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have been adequately informed. For our, our followers on social media, we'd 
had asked about the art industry in Kenya. Do keep the conversation going. We'll definitely sample the views and interact with you in the course of the day. We'll leave you with the proverb and the picture of the day. My name is Jesse Rogers. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.